So communication is the medicine to heal this broken world. Uh, I mean, that's a bold claim, if ever there was one. And I want to actually make a case for this today and, and suggest that by working with communication, we are actually getting to the heart of many of the situations that are the most upsetting to us, the most stressful, and uh, cause the most negativity in this world. Now, that it's very reasonable to say, you know, communication is not everything. Come on. Like there's, there's a lot of other issues and problems. And, and of course, that's true. You know, we have a pandemic going on right now and you're not going to talk to a virus and, you know, suggest that it not cause you harm. That's not how this goes, right? That's not the world we live in. But uh, let's, let's look at everything around that. Let's look at how decisions get made. Let's look at whose needs get addressed and whose needs are neglected. Let's look at um, politics, right? You know, let's look at how you're dealing with your situation and who you're surrounded by and how you're working with them. In all of that, communication is not just a side issue. It's not just, well, I have my relationships. And then within you know, the relationships, there's this side issue of communication. Actually, communication is the relationship to a large degree. You know, unless somebody's in a coma, your relating to each other has to do with uh, not just what you say and how you listen, but actually the nonverbal communication as well. And I want to actually make the case that what happens person to person isn't fundamentally different than what happens socially in our communities, in our politics, you know, online. All of this is social. All of this is person to person, even if you're tweeting to a million people. They are people and you are a person. So the question here becomes one of attunement, actually, that attuning to what's going on with a person or a group of people allows us to speak. Communication is, uh, one of the metaphors we use in mindful communication is it's a bridge you build between islands. And the thing about a bridge is it has to be connected on both sides. You don't have a bridge that just is connected on one side and say, oh, that's fine. We've got a good bridge here. It doesn't really matter what you drive across that bridge. If it's not connected to the other side, what is the point? You know, is it even really communication? And that's the problem right now. I think a lot of what we're struggling with you know, within our close relationships and within the larger societies and at, at political levels and even globally has to do with the fact that we're not connecting the bridge on both sides. And, you know, I want to say that, that it is correct that communication is not everything. You know, years ago, uh, my mentor, Susan, Gillis Chapman and myself, we were, we were teaching in Poland and we were there. Uh, we visited Auschwitz and Birkenau. And we both turned to each other. I think it was at Birkenau. We were standing there looking out at the train tracks that come into that massive facility. And we, we had a little conversation where we agreed that this is where communication was not appropriate anymore. This was not about um, getting the Nazis onto the same page as you. This is when you use an army. 
So I want to say that there are situations like that, or there's the situation where you just you just lock the door and lock somebody out, or you know, uh, if the situation is actually uh, seriously dangerous, you you call the police or you call for help or something, right? There's the situations where you don't you're actually not communicating anymore, very much so. This is part of what we teach. But there are a lot of situations where communication is still extremely helpful and actually can prevent you getting into those more desperate situations. So that's the key. It's sort of the preventative medicine. The idea of this attunement, of connecting. How do I connect with someone? How, how is my speech connecting with who they are right now? You know, and if you're tweeting to a million people, how is my, what I'm saying, connecting to those million people? How do I even feel that? How do I know what's true in that situation about how the communication is landing? And then what decision I make next? What do I say next? And this can be true, I mean, you're a parent talking to a child. There's not a recipe you know, it's not one size fits all. It is a living experience. It's an interchange. Things are flowing back and forth across these bridges of communication that we build. And that flow is important. When your two islands are connected by a bridge, you get to know each other. And knowing each other is so different than those people living on that island over there. You know, that person who I don't really get Instead, you get into a back and forth and you learn each other and you, you can then understand each other to finer and finer degrees. Even if you, don't, if you don't agree with each other, you can still begin to see the patterns and understand, you know, when is somebody triggered? How can you tell? Are they triggered that way just with you or are they actually triggered that way with everybody? This is the key. This is the key is how to actually pay attention become mindful so that those bridges get built and they're connected. That is how we heal things. That's how wars end, right? I mean, they end in defeat, but then it, 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 that can happen as well. But then that, even then it's a conversation. Okay, we defeated you, now what? Now we talk it through. What happens next? You know, how do you rebuild that society? And uh, that's the key, is not to give up on conversation, not to give up on communication, not to give up one of our greatest medicines that we have access to. <laughs>